Welcome, dear learners. In continuation to our previous video on spectroscopy, in this video, we are going to discuss about uh, the rotational energy of a rigid diatomic molecule. So, uh, in microwave region, when uh, a molecule is exposed to microwave radiation, it show rotation. And the, here the term rigid is used because a chemical bond is here the chemical bond is considered as a rigid bond. So the bond between two atom is rigid, hence called as rigid bond, and the molecule is known as rigid rotator. The simple linear molecule AB is considered for our discussion having mass M1 and M2. It is shown with the help of this diagram. Let us A and B, these spheres are used to denote uh, the molecule AB and this line joining the center of A and B is called as the bond length. Let us M1 is the mass of uh, atom A and M2 is the mass of the atom B. Now, this distance AB is denoted by the letter R0. And on this line AB, G is a point along which the molecule show rotation or the rotational axis is passing through the point G. Therefore, this point G divides bond length R0 into two parts, R1 and R2. So R1 is the distance of center of mass of atom A to the rotational axis. And R2 is the distance of center of mass of B from rotational axis G. Now this G is also considered as a balancing point about which molecule rotate end over end rotations. So we can write here M1 R1 is equal to M2 R2 because G is a balancing point on this line AB. And R1 R2 <coughs> are the distance <coughs> from A and B to G. Therefore, we can write R0 is equal to R1 plus R2. Now we have two equations. Our first equation is M1 R1 is equal to M2 R2 and R0 is equal to R1 plus R2. Then the moment of inertia about this axis G is written as moment of inertia I is equal to M1 R1 square plus M2 R2 square. That is our equation number three. But from equation number two, we have R0 is equal to R1 plus R2. Therefore, R2 is equal to R0 minus R1. Now put this value in equation. We can write here M1 R1 is equal to M2 R2. But instead of R2, we write this new value R0 minus R1. So put value R0 minus R1. And after solving this, uh, we get the value of R1 is equal to M2 R0 upon M1 plus M2. Now Similarly, we can calculate the value of R2. So for that, uh, we should put the value of R1 that is equal to R0 minus R2 in above equation. And again, solving the uh, same way, we get the value of R2 that is equal to M1 R0 upon M1 plus M2. Okay. So in this way, we have calculated the value of R1 and R2 by solving these equations. <coughs> now here, uh, we know that moment of inertia I is equal to M1 R1 square plus M2 R2 square. But instead of R1 and R2, here we are going to put the new values of R1 and R2. After putting this value of R1 and R2 in the equation of moment and moment of inertia then here uh, the square of this bracket and square of this second bracket we get 
i is equal to m1 r2 square r0 square divided by m1 plus m2 square plus m2 m1 square plus r0 square divided by m1 plus m2 bracket square now here uh, m1 m2 and r0 bracket square is the common term from both these uh, terms plus m1 plus m2 bracket square so m1 plus m2 square get cancelled with m1 plus m2 and in this way we get i moment of inertia is equal to m1 into m2 divided by m1 plus m2 divided by r0 square now m1 into m2 divided by m1 plus m2 is equal to mu that is called as reduced mass okay so in this way uh, we get the simplify equation for moment of inertia i moment of inertia is equal to mu r0 square this equation gives the moment of inertia in the form of atomic masses and bond length by the use of schrodinger equation it may be shown that the rotational energy level allowed to the rigid diatomic molecules are given by the expression epsilon j or ej is equal to h square upon 8 pi square i j into j plus 1 joules where j is equal to 0 1 2 etc in this <coughs> equation h is equal to planck's constant whose value is 6.627 into 10 to minus 27 r or into 10 to minus 34 joule i is moment of inertia j is the rotational constant number whose value is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. In this equation, the energy is expressed in terms of joule, but in spectroscopy, centimeter inverse is the most commonly used unit for the expression of energy. Therefore, simply by dividing energy by hc, h into c, we get energy in centimeter inverse. But here, instead of Ej, epsilon j is the notation used for the energy in terms of centimeter inverse. So by dividing uh, the equation by epsilon j, we get Ej upon Hc, that is equal to h upon 8 pi square Ic j into j plus 1. Instead of writing this term, h upon 8 pi square Ic, uh, notation is used that is b b is a rotational constant and rotational constant b is equal to h upon 8 pi square ic centimeter inverse so energy of a rigid diatomic molecule is calculated by this equation epsilon j is equal to b j into j plus 1 centimeter inverse remember this the unit is now become centimeter inverse so in this case B is rotational constant and J is equal to uh, rotational quantum number which will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, M up to N. <coughs> now by using this equation, we can find out different energy levels in uh, diatomic uh, molecules. So if the transition is from J is equal to 0 to J is equal to 1, for that, we can calculate the energy for each level for where j is equal to 0, j is equal to 1, j is equal to 2, j is equal to 3, etc. So by putting the value of j is equal to 0 in this equation, we get the value of energy is equal to 0. So at j is equal to 0 level, molecule is not rotating. But when j is equal to 1, then epsilon j is equal to pj into j plus 1, it become 2b. In this way, it become 6b, 12b, 20b, 30b and so on. Simply by putting the value of j is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we get the energy at different level. In this way, the energy, these are the energy levels 0b, 2b, 6b, 12b, 20b, 30b, etc. These are the energy levels and allowed rotational energies of a rigid diatomic molecule. So consider the difference between the level in order to discuss the spectrum. So consider molecule B at J is equal to 0, then its 
transition is from j is equal to 0 to j is equal to 1 and the difference in energy is calculated by the difference energy of first level minus energy of uh, or energy of second level minus energy of initial or energy of final minus initial in this way the difference between two adjacent energy levels is calculated and here uh, we get answer 2p minus 0 that is equal to 2b centimeter inverse it is cm this is the first level where j is equal to 0 and this is second level where j is equal to 1 and the difference between these two levels is 2b similarly difference between these two levels that is j is equal to 1 and j is equal to 2 is 4b okay so in this way 2b 4b 6b 8b 10b so the difference between two adjacent level increases in this manner so again uh, energy difference is calculated for j is equal to 2 to j is equal to 1 and it comes to be 4b similarly 6b 8b and so on so this is the difference between two adjacent energy level 2b 4b 6b 8b 10b so on so in this way uh, different energy levels are observed in the uh, rotational spectrum of the digit molecule and it is explained with the help of this equation but for this energy level there is a selection rule and the selection rule for this uh, transition is delta j is equal to plus or minus one so when molecule absorb uh, microwave radiation then uh, the transition occur between uh, two adjacent level or the difference between the transition that is second level minus first level it should not be greater than plus or minus one okay so transition is always takes place between two adjacent level and that is called as selection rule so transition from zero to one is allowed from one to two is allowed from say two to three is allowed but transition from two to four is not allowed because only allowed transition is between two adjacent energy level delta j is equal to plus or minus one <coughs> application of wave mechanical treatment and solving schrodinger wave equation for diatomic molecule indicator that only transition in which uh, the rotational quantum number j changes equal to one these are the allowed transition and if it is greater than one then these transitions are not allowed therefore difference in the transition delta j is equal to plus or minus one this is called as selection rule now the rotational spectra and bond length the study of rotational spectra of diatomic molecule reveals that all spectral lines are equ equidistant that is distance between two adjacent spectral line is 2b per centimeter therefore the rotational spectra measuring the distance between two adjacent line value is b is equal to h upon 8 pi square ic that is a rotational constant i is equal to h upon 8 pi square bc where h pi c and b are known and moment of inertia can be calculated by using the equation i is equal to mu r0 square so uh, there are some numericals based on this expression of rigid diatomic molecule in pure rotational spectra of hcl molecule the distance between two successive lines was found to be 20 centimeter inverse calculate the bond length so atomic masses of hydrogen and chlorine is given h is equal to 1 and cl is equal to 35.5 the distance between two successive line is 2b and 2b is equal to 20 centimeter inverse therefore b is equal to 10 centimeter inverse it is given uh, and so b is equal to 10 centimeter inverse but what is b actually b is equal to h upon 8 by square I C. So here we have we know the value of H, pi, and C. 
So by modifying for I, we can calculate the moment of inertia. And the moment of inertia I, by putting all these values, moment of inertia I is equal to 2.79 into 10 to minus 40 grams per centimeter inverse. Now the reduced mass mu is equal to m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 into m upon n, where n is a vaporous number. So by putting the value of atomic masses of hydrogen and fluorine and multiply it by using this m upon n a vaporous number, we get reduced mass. Mu is equal to 1.615 into 10 to minus 24. So we have calculated uh, moment of inertia, we have calculated reduced mass. Now by using this our equation i is equal to mu r square or mu r zero square, we can calculate bond length. So by modifying this for r, r is equal to under root i upon mu. And that is equal to 1.31 into 10 to minus 8 centimeter inverse. 1.31 into 10 to minus 8 centimeter inverse. But in, in terms of angstrom, r bond length is equal to 1.31 angstrom. r is equal to 1.21 angstrom. So in this way, with the help of this equation, bond length is calculated. So same problems are there, and this is for the practice purpose. The rotational spectra of diatomic molecule consist of equidistant lines with spacing 10 centimeter in mass. Calculate the bond length of diatomic molecule. Its reduced mass mu is 1.7 into 10 to the minus 27. So here the uh, name of molecule is not given, but reduced mass is given. So since we have uh, reduced mass is provided to us, uh, so it is not necessary that we should know about the name of the molecule. Okay, we know uh, we know the value of b. The distance between two adjacent lines is two b. That is equal to ten centimeter. Therefore, b is equal to five centimeter. Reduced mass is given. B is equal to h upon 8 pi square ic in terms of this equation we can calculate moment of inertia now moment of inertia and reduced mass is given modified it for r bond length and after solving we get 1.81 angstrom so in this way bond length is calculated this is another problem it is again same type of problem calculation of reduced mass and moment of inertia so these are the problems, Similar, same type of problems. This is for your practice, practice purpose. Okay, so this is all about uh, the equation of rigid diatomic molecule, its derivation and problems based on rigid diatomic molecules. Thank you.